Well, hi, welcome back to Everybody Loves Politics. I'm Tom Bullington, your host. And today I'm very honored to have Representative-elect Tony Jurgens with us. Um, Tony just won the 54B House of Representatives race, uh, which covers Hastings, part of Cottage Grove, and, uh, and some other communities around. And you were reminding me before the show exactly what that district is. Uh, well, thank you, Tom. First of all, mm -hmm. it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. And, and yes, 54B is all of Hastings, uh, Nininger Township, um, about half of Cottage Grove. The landmark that I tell people is it's roughly east of Jamaica Avenue. There's a little bit of, of west of Jamaica, but if you think east of Jamaica, and then it includes Denmark Township and Afton. So really all the way to the St. Croix River and as far north as uh, I-94, with the exception of some, some of the area that was carved out for a different district. Great, great. I don't think people actually realize it's that large. It's not just Hastings and Cottage Grove and part of Cottage Grove. It's even more than that. So. Yeah, and it's about uh, almost 40,000 people Wow, per, for, per house district. Great, great. Well, congratulations on your victory. Thank you very much. Uh, I know it's your first time running for political office, correct? Of any kind, that's right. Of any yes. kind, wow. So you go right to the state Although, level. Although, you know, one thing that I, I never brought, I never thought of and brought up during the campaign, I was uh, my sophomore high school class president. <laughs> I forgot about I forgot about that and that one well, was, great. <laughs> didn't really do anything there so the <laughs> okay well that was a stepping stone <laughs> yeah. to the state house that was it I guess that was it. Uh, so House of Representatives the terms are two years correct so you'll be back perhaps in in two years running for re-election um, depending on how this all goes uh, but um, so that's great to have a new face I know we have a new face on the Senate side with uh, with Dan Shane as well Shown, so, yep, Shown, Dan, yes. Representative Shown. so um, so tell us a little bit why you why you decided to run for House of Representatives. Well, I've I've been interested over the years, and I've uh, I haven't really been involved at my the local party level, um, but I have been involved to a small extent with uh, Representative McNamara's campaigns, and that started I think with his probably his first campaign. I was, happened to be walking into church one day when he was, and I stopped and introduced myself and said you could put a sign in my yard if you'd like. And of course, then he he you know asked me if I would drop some literature for him, so I did that, mm -hmm. and then and then every campaign I helped him put signs up and take signs down, and that was so I got to know Denny pretty well. Right. And over the years, um, I, probably because of my um, involvement in both Cottage Grove and Hastings, you know, I've got ties to both communities, mm -hmm. and he'd asked if I would ever be interested in in running for that when he was ready to to step down and. And I thought, you know, maybe, you know, if the time is right sometime in the future, I, I might take a look at that. Um, I'd been talked to by the local party before about running for state senate or something like that, and it was just never the, the right mm -hmm. time for me. And when it came up this year, it was uh, kind of short notice, and I just thought if I'm ever going to do it, this is probably the right time. So I just jumped, I jumped in the deep end and I go for in, it. That's right. That's great. Well, we saw all of your red signs all over. <laughs> so you were, you yeah. were well represented <laughs> yes. uh, out there. And uh, what was the, did you like door knocking? I know you had door knocked for Denny, but uh, did you like the, that face-to-face -face experience and, and getting to meet people? You know, the, the, the way I explain it is it's sort of like uh, an exercise program. If you're, if you're wanting to go running or, or starting a running program, you could think of every excuse in the book to not go out that day you know, it's raining or you don't feel well or it's hot or whatever it is. But when you put, once you push yourself out the door, then you really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. and, and I came home, I think, in a better mood every day than I was in when I went out. So I really did enjoy it. Um, you know, like I said, sometimes there are days when, when you, you know, think of every reason not to go out because you're busy or whatever it is. Right. But once I got out there and started connecting with the people and talking to mm -hmm. them, um, I really did enjoy it. And this is Minnesota. People weren't rude. I didn't get the door slammed in my face. If The worst I would get, somebody would say, I'm not interested, no thank you. And mm -hmm. they were still polite about it. So right. it was, it was a, a, just a, a great experience all the way around. Mm -hmm. I know my experience in, in door knocking for various campaigns over the years has been, most people are very just, they're honored that someone is coming around asking for their vote or giving them information about the candidate. Mm -hmm. um, very few will say, you know, get out of here. I had one, one gentleman this last campaign say, I don't, I don't answer the door for crooks or politicians. Okay, well, <laughs> but that was the only time anyone said anything negative yeah. about, and it didn't matter who I was, I door knocked for a few candidates this time around, and and never got any negative uh, comments, really, or doors slammed in yeah, my people face. People are generally so. pretty friendly. 
-hmm. And I got some, um, you know, like I said, the, the worst I would get if they just said that they weren't interested. Um, and you can kind of gauge early on in the conversation if you're basically going to get enough time to introduce yourself and hand them a piece of literature, mm -hmm. or if they're going to engage a little bit more. Sure. And that, it, it got easier to engage people the closer we got to the election. When I started in the summer and asking people if, what issues were on their mind, they, there weren't any. Mm -hmm. Fishing. Um, yeah, that was exactly. about. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and the different things that were going on, you know, topically at the time. It, sure. You know, if you remember that there was a, uh, some police officers in Dallas that were that were shot. Right. And so for that week, that was a topic of conversation. People were asking about that, and we had the Olympics, and we had the the presidential debates, and so whatever was topical at that time, people seemed mm -hmm. to want to talk about. Um, but then as we got closer to the election, then it started to get to be a little bit more issues related. Mm -hmm. So. It was, uh, and fortunately, we I made it to um, a lot of the, the houses the second time. Great, and so we were able to the first time more of a of a um, name recognition, name recognition, sort of thing, introduction, right? just hand them the lit piece that gave my bio basically, mm -hmm. and then we got into a little bit more of the issues as we got closer to the election. Now I know we had we had talked, um, you know, about signs and you putting up signs. I know your opponent. Uh, put up signs quite early in the campaign mm -hmm. and, and there weren't your signs up. Did you get, did you, were you helped by the state party or were people giving you suggestions or Denny saying, um, okay, now is the, the preferable time to start, whether it's putting signs up or go door knocking. Did you get some advice mm -hmm. on kind of how to do that and how to stage your campaign a little bit or? Uh, yeah, I did. And mm -hmm. um, as far as the, the signs, um, you know, the first thing, one of the first things I had to do was pick a logo and and, uh, and so Representative McNamara did put me in touch with a consultant that was able to help me with those types of things because right away, you know, I had parades coming up and I had to order t-shirts. I yep. got them at, at specialties here in, in Hastings and they were able to turn them around real quickly for me, but I had to have a logo first. Right. And so the consultant, I told him roughly what I wanted. You mentioned the bright red signs. I knew I wanted something that was going to stand out. And I said, I just want it, you know, plain, whatever you, you know, and he took, showed me to a, a website and said, pick something on this page. And I picked it out in about two seconds. I said, Great. that one. Um, and so then I had the signs on order. And as far as timing goes, there was a couple different um, schools of thought on that. One was sort of a as you get the locations, you put them out and you kind of build up towards election day. Um, and, you know, as you mentioned, um, my opponent, he got his out earlier. And I just wasn't ready to start putting them out then. Mm -hmm. um, but we did have some of the, the signs in very visible locations. So we put right. those out early. And, uh, and then with the smaller ones, the, the, the size that you see most, in most yards, we, those came a little bit later. Sure. And we were still putting them up a week or two weeks before the election. You know, if I'd go door knocking in a neighborhood and somebody would want a sign or I'd mm -hmm. ask if they had a nice location and I would ask them about a sign, I, I mean, I kept some in my car. And a lot of times I... Right. After dark, you know, it was just getting too dark to, to door knock, I'd go put a couple signs in. Sure, sure. Um, so you mentioned you're going around door knocking, you're speaking with folks. As the, as the election got uh, a little bit closer mm -hmm. to November, did you have, what were people, what are, what's on people's minds this, this fall? So September, October, what were people saying? Is it about, you know, health care? Absolutely. And, okay. that, was the, that was the main thing because if you remember from a timing perspective, um, that's when we started hearing about another double-digit increase for um, the, Minsure. Right, for, the Minsure, for, but mm -hmm. the individual market and, sure. and Blue Cross was getting out of the individual market and other companies were putting caps on new business. So it really started to, to ratchet up and, and we're seeing that today too. I mean, that's really the, the big thing. And it's not just the, the cost of health care, but it's also accessibility. I think we're going to hear more and more about that in the, in the next uh, couple of months, mm -hmm. you know, especially in, in outstate or rural Minnesota where people that live in one town and there's a clinic in that town, but they can't go there. They have to go to the next town over right. to go to the doctor. And, and maybe if the pediatrician is the other direction, 30 miles. So that's something I think we're going to hear more and more about. But it, it was definitely health care um, that, that, I mean, I had people that I was talking to that were in tears or nearly mm -hmm. tears just talking about, you know, I don't know what we're going to do. So that is something that we need to address um, right away. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm looking forward to being a part of that solution. Um, they, they may even cover that in a short special session. There's been talk about that. Of course, I won't be a part of it. I'll be there as a spectator if it's before I'm sworn in. Okay. Um, but but healthcare was one of them. Transportation is another one. Sure. You know, I met with a lot of people during my campaign, um, chiefs of police and mayors and city administrators and county commissioners. And when I met with uh, Commissioner Slavic, we were talking about 
the transportation and, and you know, for, for one thing, it's not just getting people from Hastings or Cottage Grove to work in St. Paul or in the Twin Cities, mm -hmm. but you also have industries in the town, in, in our district, that need employees. And so we need ways for employees to get here too, whether it's more highways or, or whether it's bus rapid transit. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing that, that uh, Commissioner Slavic pointed out is we also have an east-west need. You know, people in Hastings need to get to Burnsville or Rosemount Absolutely. or somewhere Lakeville, somewhere in that direction. So it's not just north-south, but we have to think about east-west as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Commissioner Slavic, I think, has been great. He's been very vocal, as has Mayor Hicks here in, in Hastings, as far as talking about transit. Mm -hmm. And because um, we are kind of isolated down here, mm -hmm. we're just far enough away where you know we have the. Uh, the park and ride in Cottage Grove, mm -hmm. but sometimes that's difficult to get to, or it's full, or people don't want to drive all the way up up there. They'd mm -hmm. like one maybe here in Hastings. Um, and transit definitely is something I've heard about as well as, as a big issue. Yep. Um, anything else as far as topics people are coming up with and saying, hey, when you get up to St. Paul, I need this, or please tell them about this. Yeah, some of the things, you know, um, the, the um one of the topics that I heard a few different times is um, not taxing uh, Social Security benefits for retirees. I mm -hmm. had a few people that are nearing retirement that said, hey, well, as soon as I retire, I'm out of state, I'm moving. Okay. And so that's something that we need to take a look at. We, and, and it has been looked at as, as before, it's, and that's not something new. Mm -hmm. um, last year, uh, I, I can't take credit for it, I wasn't there yet, but <laughs> um, they, they did um, eliminate the, the taxes for veterans benefits, which I think is a benefit to, to the veterans Definitely. that are receiving their, their retirement benefits. Um, so that was one of them, doing the same with Social Security. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you hear water quality, and, and big part right. of it, as we talked about our district before, a big part of that is ag land. And so um, there's different different causes, I guess you could say, that we need to take a look at. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Denmark Township area, there's some, some areas where PFCs are contaminated in the water and there's a ver variety of sources. Mm -hmm. 3M was part of that and they're paying right. to clean that up. Mm -hmm. But there's other so sources of that as well, um, like fire retardant, uh, you know, where, wherever there was a big chemical fire and the, the fire retardant that they use, they've noticed that there's higher levels of PFCs in that area. So okay. that's something that, that needs our attention as well as the nitrates. Um, and you know, people are always interested in taxes and education and, and in this area in ag-related sure. uh, policies as well. So on education, um, as the viewers may not know, the Republican Party has taken over the uh, control of the uh, state senate mm -hmm. here in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. We have a, a DFL governor, but the, the two houses of the legislature are now controlled by Republicans starting in January. Do you see education or things like health care and, and these other transit, these other issues, do you see, uh, is there going to be a shift because of the GOP controlling both houses of the legislature or um, do you think you have enough votes to get over a, a veto from Governor Dayton, or how's all that going to play out? Well, the the, the House margin um, majority is, is greater than the Senate. The Senate has just a one vote majority. Okay. And so that's in politics, that's razor thin. Right. And and so I think what you're really, I, honest, in all honesty, I think what you're going to see is some really good legislation mm -hmm. because you've got. You know, pretty good majority in the House. You have a razor thin majority in the Senate, and you have um, the other party in the in the governor's office. So, I think you're going to really see the three entities working very well together. At least that's what I'm hoping for. Good. But I, I think we're going to see some really good legislation come out of it. Great, great. Um, do you see any changes with education specifically as far as uh, the way things are funded for local communities? I know Hastings has declining enrollment, and I know one of the concerns is that. Um, the funding is tied to the enrollment, right. and uh, so I'm not sure with um, with the school district. I know there's a school board election next year. All of those things. Do you see the the house or the senate maybe picking up education in some way? Or it's always going to be part of it. Mm -hmm. And you know, I mentioned the the different people that I met with as we during the campaign, and I did meet with the super, superintendent of schools in both 833 in Cottage Grove and here in Hastings and then I came back and met with the full school board and the interesting thing is on, on both sides what they said um, you know we just want it to be fair we right. understand that there are going to be times when we really want funding for something 
um, but it might make more sense to go to South St. Paul or some other school district mm -hmm. and because they might really need it too and there are going to be times when they say yeah they needed it more than we did this time. So I think that's really the, the biggest thing is they just want it to be fair. Sure. And um, I, I'm not aware of any you know specifically what any of the new mm -hmm. um, um, proposals might be might come from that and I don't know what committees I'll be on if I'll be on an education okay. related one or not. So um, we'll have to wait and see where that, how that shakes out. So maybe walk us through what it's like to be a new state representative. It's been a while for here uh, for us here in Hastings that we've had a new state representative, and years, a yeah. fresh face. Yes. So, and you know, obviously, we wish uh, Representative McNamara all the best in his retirement, and uh, he represented us well here in Hastings. But your your experience, you were telling me off camera about. There was a retreat where Republicans and Democrats right. actually got along in the same room? Yeah, we did. Okay. Yeah, believe it or not, we great. got along great. <laughs> um, there was a training session last week uh, for three days. It was off-site. It was bipartisan. Mm -hmm. uh, Republicans and Democrats together, you know, sitting at the same tables and eating lunch together and rooming together. I mean, wow. it, was, okay. it really was. And, and we, that's so important because... This is the class of representative, depending on how long we're in. It might be two years, it might be 14 years or longer, um, you mm -hmm. know, like Representative McNamara. But you really have to build relationships and work with people on both sides. And what we heard, and so the, the representatives that were running this, there were two Democrats, two Republicans, and sometimes you wouldn't know who was who. I mean, it was just all about the process and what we were going to be involved with. Sure. And it wasn't party politics in there. And um, you know what? What we heard from on both sides, from from both sides, was you know get to know these people. You're going to be working with them, and we hear about all of the big issues where there's you know maybe disagreement from one side to the other. Mm -hmm. But what we hear over and over again is what you don't hear about is how many times we work well together. Right. Um, you hear uh, the the media picks up when there's a fight, when there's a disagreement, mm -hmm. but I don't know what the percentage is, but 80, 90% of the time, there's bipartisan support on bills because it's just what makes sense. This is a good thing for Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And you take your party you know, hat off, and if it's, a, if it's good for Minnesota, then it, if it's a Democrat, in my case, if it's a Democrat that proposed it, I might put my name on there as one of the, you know, one of the authors as well. Okay. Um, or one of the Great. sponsors. So um, I think it was really good. Um, and you know, it was pretty intense for three days, but Right. It was. It was. I think it was a good next step. So they have you to the Capitol. I'm sure. Uh, you know, with all the scaffolding and all the construction going on, you get a little tour. Haven't been in there yet. Haven't been in there no, yet. No, okay. We're, no, we were. Uh, every time I've gone up there, the meetings have been in the state office building where the offices are. Sure. And where the most of the committee meetings are, it's right across the street, so you can see it. But I haven't actually been in there yet. Okay. Okay. Wow. I don't know well, if I'll get a chance to go in before we're sworn in or not. It might be. <laughs> that might be my first time. I mean, I've been in there before. Sure. Yeah. Before but, the but, whole. Right. But not as, no, not since the election day, I haven't been in. Wow, okay, well, we'll have to sneak you in or something yeah. here. <laughs> um, so, well, that is great to hear. There's a little bit of bipartisan uh, work going on behind the scenes that people are not really aware of. Because right. all you do see and hear is, you know, the Republicans are, are, are mad about this, or Democrats are upset about this, and mm -hmm. we're fighting back and forth. Obviously, at the national level, mm -hmm. uh, a, lot of, a lot of stuff like that going on. But I know I met, had the honor of meeting Senator Franken in, uh, in Washington a few years back for a work thing. And he sat us down and he said, you know, I get along pretty well with Ted Cruz. And you wouldn't think that Al Franken and Ted Cruz would be BFFs, mm -hmm, but yeah. I guess they are. Um, not on camera as much, but they do work on things yeah. together. So that's encouraging to hear. I yeah. think people need to hear that. No, and, and, and I want, in fact, one of the, uh, one of the new representatives, a Democrat, uh, when we were leaving on Friday and, and heading to the, bu the, to the bus, I said, you know what, let's, I said, let's find something that we can work on together. Let's, let's put something together that we, can, that we can do together. And she said, yeah, let's you know, grab a cup of coffee after Christmas. So, yeah. you know, we're already starting that and we haven't even been sworn in yet. Oh, that's great. That's great. Well, I know uh, you, you were campaigning on a lot of different issues. But one of the things you said, and I know my wife saw you speak and I saw you speak a couple times um, here at the forum. If you haven't seen it, it's on Hastings Community TV YouTube page. It's great. It's a great uh, experience for, for everyone. Um, one of the things you said, Tony, was that if you disagree with something that the Republican leadership says, um, that you may not necessarily vote in that direction. 
and we talked about this a little bit before the before the show, but but how how would that work? Well, I mean that that will obviously that will be difficult if it comes to that, but. Mm -hmm. Um, I have to remember who I work for and who put me here, and it's the it's the people in our district. It's the people of Hastings and Cottage Grove and the rest of 54B. That's who I report to. It's I don't report to the to the Republican leadership. Mm -hmm. um, I work with them. I need them, but I like to think that you know they need each of us as well from sure. time to time. And there will probably will be times when you get a little pressure um, on a certain issue, but. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I said it through the campaign, and I mean it. You're not going to see a 100% voting, you know, for me one way. Okay. Um, if there's something that is good for the constituents of 54B, and good for the people of Minnesota, that's going to be my litmus test, I guess. Great, great. Um, outside, so when you're campaigning, and obviously there's literature that comes out, there's money from outside of Minnesota that comes into a, a, a race like this. Um, where the, the House of Representatives is seen as something that other groups outside of Minnesota want to mm -hmm. control or change votes or whatever it might be. How do you, how do you deal with that as a first-time candidate <laughs> and you're seeing things appear with your name on them that you're saying, wow, that's not really uh, good. <laughs> and I know on the other side of things too, uh, you know, Mr. Slayton was saying, well, geez, I don't agree with that. but." It's an outside group giving yeah. you advertising. Right. How do you deal well, with that? Good and bad. You know, there mm -hmm. were there were positive lit pieces of literature coming out uh, for me. Sure. That I had nothing to do with. I didn't. You know, I would look at it and think, well, I wouldn't use that picture, or <laughs> you know, I would I would have said it a little right. bit differently. Um, but you have no control over it. You have mm -hmm. you have what you can control, and and that's only you know my campaign. And I think we put out seven lit pieces, and they're. How many did you get? Twenty. A and lot. A right. lot of them. A lot. So the rest of them, I had no control over. Okay. Some of them were negative towards my opponent. Some of them were negative towards me. Mm -hmm. um, and and that's not just lip pieces. That's TV ads. I don't know. I mean, there were cable TV ads. I one night I got home from door knocking. It was late. I was tired. I you know threw a pizza in. Nobody was home. And I thought I'm just here and watch diners, dive ins, and drives. <laughs> you know, just to relax a little bit. Right. And then I. I and an ad came on. I thought, oh, I haven't seen this before. There's a guy in a cornfield, you know, hunting or whatever. And, and so I thought, well, this is, looks like a political ad. Well, then my face popped up. <laughs> and it said, that's why Tony Jurgens is wrong for Minnesota. And I'm oh, thinking, wow. well, what, I, what did I do now? <laughs> I didn't even, I don't know what. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little bit surreal. You know, mm -hmm. you get used to seeing your name on the signs when you're driving down the highway. Yeah. But it took a little bit longer to, you know, go to the mailbox and see five different lit pieces there, some of them in favor of you, some of them not in favor of you. And, sure. Um, there's a lot of money that goes out. And, and by law, um, even those you mentioned out of state, uh, I don't know where the money's coming from for those things, but mm -hmm. um, some of them are just even state of Minnesota politics. And the people that are doing that, by law, they can't have any community. We can't coordinate in any way. Right. So the PACs, right. Yep. So I have, you know, I had absolutely no control over over those. Like I said, I mean, little things mm -hmm. like I, I would use a different picture or something like that. <laughs> you know, yeah. you can't coordinate. So you have no messaging. You know, they can message whatever they want. Yeah. And uh, just, I hopefully it helps. Well, Tony, thank you for being on the show. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Already. But right. we it are. Fast. I know. It goes so fast, talking politics. Uh, but please, uh, you know, come back to the show. And also, if, if folks like want that. to get in touch with you, how can they get in touch with you uh, as you begin the session? Okay. Well, I do have uh, um, Tony at TonyJergens.com is probably the, the best way to get a hold of me. Mm -hmm. um, and then keep an eye. I'll be able to publicize it, publish it soon, but I'll have an office set up and I know where my office is going to be, but somebody else is in there right now. There's sure. a little bit of a shuffle going on, and I'll have a, um, a house email set up. But for now, they can get a hold of me at Tony uh, at uh, TonyJergens.com. Great. All right. We'll have that on the screen here um, as we put the show together. Tony, again, congratulations and good luck. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So here's a thought. 240 years ago, when the United States came into being, it was far from certain that our fledgling republic would even survive, much less flourish and grow into the most powerful and successful nation on earth. At that time, the United States was thought to be too divided, too diverse, 
too big and too dysfunctional to last very long in a world where kings and queens still ruled most countries and individual liberties weren't really a thing yet. In other words, the odds were stacked against us. But as it turned out, all of those perceived weaknesses were actually our strengths. Our diversity and division led to compromise and common purpose. Our size, seen as a disadvantage to some, instead led to a growing economy, abundant natural resources, greater military strength, and the ability to grow both in size and international influence. And while dysfunction felt insurmountable at times more than two centuries ago and throughout our history, we have always seemed to emerge better for the experience. Now, given today's contentious political climate, it would behoove all of us to study some American history a bit and take solace in the fact that our nation has survived much worse than what we just transpired through the 2016 election. For example, we have endured a full-out four-year civil war, the resignations, impeachments, and assassinations of presidents, two world wars, 9-11, Pearl Harbor, Vietnam, and countless other conflicts that have compelled us to station troops around the world. So we will soon enter a new year with an intellectually challenged, megalomaniac, narcissist, reality show host as our president. And while the American people, or at least the Electoral College, may have selected Mr. Trump as our next leader, I have faith that our country will continue to move forward. There may be deep divisions, conflicts, and gridlock, but the United States of America will keep going and ultimately thrive, no matter who's in the White House. I'm Tom Bullington. We'll see you next time on Everybody Loves Politics.